All right. Well, I have dedicated this year of my presidency to the concept of service. Every person in this room is here because they wanted to serve. Most of you are physicians or physicians in training, but some of you are here because you're supporting your favorite physician, either at home or in their careers. I believe service is part of our nature and part of who we are. Of course, there are people who lose sight of their better angels, but it is hoped that somewhere or someday there will be a reminder that there is a better way. I want to focus on this concept of service because I believe it's where the academy is at its strongest. And they say you should always maximize your strengths, and that is one of the strengths of the academy, is the service that we provide. This last year, Dr. Newman and the academy leadership and staff navigated rough waters while devoting their time to maintaining the service we provide our members to the very best of their abilities. If you haven't done so yet, I encourage you to, to look over all of Dr. Newman's accomplishments in, in the president's report. You will be astounded at what she has accomplished under some very rough circumstances. So I couldn't be more grateful for her tutelage, for her mentoring. Um, I will be continuing to pick her brain and uh, call her at times where she probably won't want me to. And, and I, I couldn't be more proud of her accomplishments and the Academy's accomplishments under her dedicated and tireless leadership. So please, a hand for Dr. Doris Newman. That's it. Give it up. <laughs> I'd like to say as an aside that the, uh, the feather bows and tiaras were not my idea. The feather bow is probably um, are related back to an evening in New Orleans with Dr. Hensel and Dr. Lisa Stefano. And unfortunately, if I hadn't lost my camera, I would have some fabulous pictures of Dr. John Honer and Dr. Hurt, Kurt Heinking in feather boas as well. They, they were hot. Um, <laughs> gone, but lost in a cab in New Orleans. I can't imagine how that happened. Okay, so I want to devote more, devote more of our time and resources to the service of our younger members, our students and our residents. This is my 25th convocation, and I know that's a low number compared to a lot of you. And I hope I never miss one throughout my career. I always tell the students when I'm trying to talk to them about it that unless I you know, have a limb hanging by a thread, I will be a convocation. I, it, it's the high point of my year. Back when I was a student, everyone attending convocation got a banquet ticket as part of their registration. And some of my fondest memories were of the inspirational speeches and the honoring of the greats in our profession that, that I was privy to be able to witness. If, and I say if, had there been any doubt, these would have solidified my desire to make this my life's work. I want our students to have that opportunity as much as they can, and I am so grateful to my dean, Dr. Boyd Boozer at University of Pikeville for making it possible for our students to share in this tradition and to be here to share this uh, big event with me. Training presidents and presidents, programs in the specialty of neuromusculoskeletal medicine. And after discussions with um, some colleagues at the American Osteopathic Foundation, I would like to find a way, I don't know if any of you have ever been lucky enough to attend their banquet uh, that they do at OMED every year where they honor uh, residents from most specialties. We have sterling residents. We have people who should be standing up there getting that recognition profession-wide. Um, and our, our specialty will be getting that recognition more and more uh, as, we, as we go through our single accreditation system. So I would really like to find a way to get our residents on that program, and that's gonna be one of the things I work hard on this year. The more we dedicate our 
complete devotion to our students, the more we and our residents, the more we show them how much they mean to us and how much they mean to our future and the future of our profession, the more likely they will be to stay as part of our family once they earn their very coveted DO degree. The vision of the Academy is that all patients are aware of and have access to osteopathic medical care and osteopathic manipulative medicine for optimal health. We're on the verge of having the greatest opportunity to realize this vision that we will have possibly in our lifetimes. The Academy is planning to collaborate with ACUFP and other organizations to create the education needed for MDEs to be able to deliver osteopathic care to more patients than ever before, which serves not only the Academy's vision, but in my humble opinion, AT Stills as well. How the question now becomes, how can you in turn serve the academy? And I would say that it, sharing is caring. Share what you enjoy with your colleagues who aren't members. Convince them to join the academy. Convince them to come to some of our courses. I think most people, once they get here once, will be hooked. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of addictive like that. Convince them to uh, get to all academy events, even you know, if you have to ease them into it, do it at OMED. If they're already going to be at OMED, get them to some academy uh, lectures there. Share your time, which is as precious as anything you have, and join committees that help the ever-growing work that the academy is undertaking. We are, have our hands in more places than ever before, literally and figuratively. And we are, our influence is growing and spreading and we need help. And we want young people to move up through the ranks and to become our future leaders. So, so please consider sharing your time. Share your blessings and consider donating to the Golden Ram Society, which has suffered a great loss in its funding and is a vital buffer to the, that the Academy relies on to provide you with all the services that you receive. My, I would like to, and had I known that there was going to be a, a remarkably touching video of Dr. Fryman, uh, I probably wouldn't have chosen a video for the rest of my speech. Um, uh, but I so greatly enjoyed, thank you Dr. King for that, that video of Dr. Fryman. As a student, another great thing about being at Unicom was when they used to bring the SCTF conferences there, I guess they still do, in the fall, and let the SAO members help and like hide in the back of the rooms. And I got to see greats like Dr. Fryman and Dr. Lay that we talked about at the FAO meeting last night um, that I'll never forget. It was, it was fabulous. So uh, we have a short video for you. Um, it is, I, which I could not have produced without my son's technical abilities. Um, there are lots of, I received lots of photos. The, the uh, SAO chapters really came through for me and sent some great pictures. But I also have several of my, our academy members and some folks in the AOA who I really want to honor with to, to show off their service. I plan to highlight people who have done these kind of things throughout their career um, and throughout my year so that if you continue, even if you didn't get uh, things to me early on, I would welcome if people sent, continued to send me videos of your service activities to promote what we do because the more people see what we do and how we can help people and how we can give of our time, the more we will inspire others to do the same. So uh, I'd like to show you a short video and thank you so very, very kindly for your faith in me to, to do this very important job.